Blankets have been regaining in popularity for use by bushcrafters, car campers, and even ultralight hikers. But there's a lot of different blankets out there. How do you choose? Well, if you're interested in hearing my thoughts on this, keep watching. Before we get started, just a few things I want to cover. First off, my intention for making this video is to help you decide whether or not a blanket is appropriate for you. It's more of a discussion. It is not a recommendation for any one blanket, and it's certainly not a product review for any of the blankets that I will show you. So what I thought we would do is, first off, we'll go over a few things to consider when looking at blankets and how they can be used, and then I'll give you some examples, and we'll talk about the pros and cons for each type. So the first question we'll need to consider is why would you even want to take a blanket with you when you go out into the woods? Well the answer most people would give is for sleeping with. So either by itself or on top of a regular sleep system. The next is as a layer of warmth over top of whatever you're wearing. So as a cloak or something to wrap up in while you're next to the fire. The next reason would be for sitting on. So either on top of a bench or directly on the ground, it, they can help to keep you both warm and dry. And finally, blankets can even be used as a component in an emergency shelter system. So with a waterproof covering of some type and a blanket on the inside, you can increase the insulative value of your shelter. So you have decided that you do want to add a blanket to your camping kit. What I'll do now is give you some factors to consider to help you make your decision about which blanket. Number one is, what are you going to be doing with this blanket? What is its intended use? Is it going to be your primary sleep system like a bushcrafter might be using it for? Or is it something you're going to throw in with the rest of your kit into your car when you go car camping and then use it as something in addition to whatever else you have as a sleep system? So those are a couple of things to consider. The next thing is dollar value. What is the investment that you have to make in this blanket? I have blankets that I picked up at the thrift store for just a few dollars which are very functional and high quality and I have a blanket which I consider my prized possession given to me by a family member and that is a king size four point Hudson Bay blanket. I could not afford to pay for that on my own because as you're likely aware right now at least they sell for about $600 Canadian. So there's a wide range of prices that you can pay for blankets. Now the next thing is weight versus insulative value. So a down blanket is ultra light and has a lot of insulation as opposed to a wool blanket which is insulative but is much heavier and not quite as warm as a down blanket in many cases. We'll talk more about that in a few minutes. How about durability? So a wool blanket is known to be especially durable for a lot of reasons. We'll talk more about that in a moment. Down blankets, on the other hand, can be damaged very quickly. So that's another consideration. How about versatility? What are you going to be using it for again? And can you get multiple uses out of it? So if your primary reason for taking a blanket is as a sleep system, or is at least added on to another sleep system, that's one use. How about using it as an article of clothing, like a cloak on those chilly mornings when you get up and you want to add warmth, you want to be able to wrap this around you effectively. So that's another reason to consider. And the final thing that I'll talk about is insulative value when wet. And this is no small thing. It is well known that wool blankets will keep you warmer when wet than, let's say, a down blanket. A down blanket is virtually useless once it gets wet. Yes, I know there are some modern down blankets that have hydrophobic down inside, which means they resist getting wet and insulate you longer. But for the most part, they're also much more expensive. Okay, so those are a few factors to consider when deciding which is the best blanket for you. Now, let's go through the four different types of blankets that I have and talk about their pros and cons. So the first blanket material I want to discuss is wool. And for good reason, wool blankets have been around for a long time. They're the original blanket and they are still very popular for a great number of reasons. So what we'll do is we'll go through a list of pros and cons for wool blankets. But just before I do, I'll give you two examples that I have here. I have first, this is a Canadian military wool blanket that I picked up for around 20 or $25 at a local surplus store. I like this blanket for a number of reasons. It's nice and thick and warm, relatively soft. Wool blankets can be a little 
little itchy and scratchy. This one, not so much. My understanding is this is 80% wool and 20% nylon. And the nylon does add to some of the durability of blankets like this without necessarily sacrificing the qualities the wool has. Now, I have another blanket I'll share with you. This one I picked up at the local thrift store and I paid a lot less than that price. Now, try to get that for a blanket like this for what I paid for it now and you probably have a hard time. But this is a 100% wool blanket, very nice soft wool blanket indeed, and still very thick and still very comfortable. Now this one was intended for home use, as you can tell, it has that satin uh, edging on it. That in no way prevents it from being used out in the woods, it's just that it wasn't designed originally for use in the wood. All right, so what is it about wool blankets that make them so popular? Well, the number one claim for wool blankets is that they will keep you warm while they're wet. And there is some truth to that. I looked into the research and there is some truth that wool blankets will keep you warm while, you're, while they are wet but there is a limit to that. Now, they often claimed is that 80, they will retain 80% of their insulative value when soaking wet, and there is no proof to that. However, there is proof to say that you will continue to feel warm in a wool blank as it absorbs up to 30% of its own weight in water. So that's not bad. Now, that means it's still pretty soaking wet, but when the blanket gets absolutely saturated, you're going to lose the insulative value regardless of what you hear other places. Here's the good news. It takes a while for a wool blanket to get wet. In fact, they resist getting wet very, very well. When you think about it, sheep don't often complain about being soaking wet, do they? Because there is lanolins, materials that the sheep extrude into the wool of their, their fur or their wool, and that prevents them from getting wet. Now, blankets don't have all the lanolins that the sheep have, but they have enough left over that it does keep them somewhat water resistant for at least a period of time. Time. Here's another interesting little thing I came across when looking at wool blankets is that wool has a thermogenic effect. And what that means is that as it starts to get damp, now it won't continue for very long, but as it starts to get damp, wool will actually generate its own heat, a slight amount, but there has been some uh, evidence through research that wool can actually generate a little bit of heat as it starts to get wet. That's pretty cool when you think about it. So what is it about wool blankets beyond that? Well, one thing is they're very, very durable. Compared to other blankets such as down blankets and even other synthetic blankets, wool blankets are very durable. They can withstand quite a bit of use and even some abuse. They will stay clean longer. The resource getting dirty. Again, it's just one of those factors that in the natural material of wool that they don't hold and trap dirt and stain like a lot of other materials. On top of that, they don't retain orders. Now, yes, I know if they're stored, stored improperly, they tend to get musty, but usually they can be aired out and made to smell fresh again. But that's the nice thing is that they don't hold on to body odors particularly. They are very good at resisting um, the smells that are often associated with a lot of synthetic materials. So wool has those factors going for it. Another great thing about wool is it doesn't compress very much. So if you lay this down and wrap up in it, underneath you, there's very little compression taking place in the wool that will cause it to lose its insulative value. On the other hand, wool blankets are heavy, very heavy for the amount of insulation they provide you, especially with compared with down, for instance, and a couple of the other synthetics that I'll share with you in a moment. So wool blankets do have a lot going for them. They have some great factors, and what, not the least of which, of course, for bushcrafters and a lot of campers is the fact that they are burn resistant. Now, they're not totally fireproof, but if you're sitting next to a fire and an ember flashes out of the fire and lands on the wool blanket, good chance that the ember will go out before before it causes any damage, or at least give you enough time to get the ember off of your blanket before it causes any damage. Can't do that with a down blanket covered in nylon, or even a fleece blanket for that matter. So wool blankets do have a lot going for them, but it's hard to justify the weight and bulk of a wool blanket unless you're just going a short distance like bushcrafters often are, or you're car camping. Ultralight hikers, wool blankets are probably off the table. All right, let's move on to the next material.
All right, the next blank of material I want to talk about is down, or actually it's more of an insulative interior to blankets rather than the material of the blanket itself. And I really, I just have the one blanket that I can share with you as an example. And this is a down blanket that I bought at Costco a few years ago. I'm not even sure Costco was selling them anymore, but they were very reasonably priced. But mind you, it is very limited in its uh, insulative value because it's not all that thick. Down blankets can really range in price from reasonable to very almost unreasonable, depending on, of course, if it's how important it is to get that extra value from it for you. So I would encourage you to at least take a look at down blankets on Amazon or any of the larger outdoor stores here in Canada. We have Mountain Equipment Co-op and they have down blankets just to see what's available out there. So what is it about down blanket that makes it so great in the first place? Lightweight ounce for ounce, gram for gram, down is the warmest of all the insulating materials that we have. Another, synth or another natural material, of course. So it is an extremely, extremely warm material for its weight. And that's important to consider because it is all about the weight. Now, if you're an ultralight hiker or you're just looking to lighten your load, then a down blanket may be something you want to consider. Although I do have a couple synthetics that I want to talk about that are pretty good as well. So what are the benefits of down? It's warmth, it's comfort, it's lightweight, it's compactability. This down blanket goes into this little stuff sack and takes up almost no room at all. And if I wanted to, I could probably even scrunch it down a little finer. Of course, that's also one of the downsides of down is when it is compressed, it loses its insulative value. So as long as it's lofted and can trap a lot of air, because of course that's how down and all the other insulative materials work is by trapping air. As long as it's lofted up and laid over top of you, then it is a great material insulative wise lay on it and it's useless because it'll compress down to something the, the thinness of paper and you will lose all of your insulative value from the down. Here's something a lot of people don't think about. Maybe they have a light down sleeping bag and they decide they'd like to throw something on top of it for added weight. So they grab a blanket of some type, maybe even a wool blanket for all the reasons we previously talked about. When you throw the wool blanket on top of the down sleeping ba bag, the bag starts to compress and you lose the insulative value. Down must be allowed to remain lofted and as much air trapped in there as possible for, in order for it to work. But work it does. It's very comfortable to sleep in and a, a well-designed down blanket can be very warm and a great alternative to, alternative to a sleeping bag for a lot of people. Certainly ultralight hikers will attest to that. Are there any downsides to down other than cost, which can be expensive as we know? Well, yeah, once it gets soaking wet, it's useless. In fact, it'll get wet very readily unless, of course, you have hydrophobic down or some type of blanket material covering the down that resists getting wet. But once down gets wet, it is useless. It's just an anchor around. It's worse than useless. It can actually make you colder than you would be if you weren't wearing it. So for that reason, down is not a great material to use and it takes forever to dry. In fact, Drying out a down blanket can be a real chore because it tends to clump inside of its chambers. So once it's dry, good down is easier to do this with, but it, you can fluff it back up to gain some of the loft, not all, some of it. You want to gain, regain all of the loft. So those, that is true about down. If you're out on a camping trip and your blanket gets, gets wet, you're not in for a good night's sleep, that's for sure. Uh, what else is it about down? It does require a lot of maintenance in terms of they can materials that they're usually covered in get can stain easily. They take more work to clean. They retain those stains and they can get smelly. Down is one of those things. The down itself, maybe not so much. It can get musty smelling if not stored properly, but it, it can actually take on smells. The nylon shells of them oftentimes take on smells. Storage of a down blanket is important as well. You don't want to keep it in any type of a compression sack for more than just the trip you're going on. When you get it home, let it out. Let it retain its loft and size because 
because over time, if it's compressed, it will retain that compression to a certain degree. So that's why a lot of sleeping bags, when they're brand new, are warmer than they are a few years later, is because people fail to leave them lofted when they get home. Yes, they take up more space, but that's part of what you have to deal with, with a down blanket or down sleeping bag for that matter. The other thing is washing them. Because they retain smells, you want to wash them every so often to get the dirt off of them, to get any grime that may have migrated into the down out of them so that it can maintain its loft. Washing them can be a problem. Now, some down blankets you may be able to do in your home washing machine. Other ones you may end up taking to a laundromat because of the extra size needed for to wash them. So that's a couple of other reasons. Now, probably the last one that I'll mention for this is that down blankets can be very subject to damage, rips, tears, those types of things. Hence, of course, sparks from fires are going to go right through the material and allow down to come floating out. Now, that's uh, something else to think about. We've all had down jackets that we've caught on a branch, and now we've got down floating out of the, the, uh, the jacket itself. Can be repaired with a little bit of tape. There are some materials specifically designed for putting on uh, as patches for down blankets and down jackets and the like, and that is something to consider having with you. Uh, tenacious tape, I think, is one of the ones that is often used, so that's a good thing to have. But compared with some of the other uh, things that I'll show you, especially the wool blankets, these are, can be especially delicate. So they can be very warm, very lightweight, but very high maintenance at the same time. All right, let's go on to the next material. All right, the next blanket material or blanket insulative material I want to look at are the synthetics. Now, I have two examples here, but this is just two of many, many different types that are available out there. So this one is around and it's familiar to a lot of people. It's been around for a long time. This is the U.S. Poncho Liner, affectionately known as the Wooby. It's used to create a sleep system by putting this inside of your poncho and using your poncho as a, a rain and wind protective uh, layer on the outside. A lot of people still like to carry these camping and hiking and for good reason. They're usually very inexpensive to pick up secondhand at surplus stores. I found this one at the thrift store. In fact, I found a couple of these over the years and a couple of the Canadian versions, which are similar, but they have a few other uh, features to them. They're usually quite inexpensive and still very good quality. They are fairly durable, and I say fairly because they can be subject to damage. But then again, if you, ha if you do damage it, it usually usually retains a lot of its insulative value even with any holes that are in them. Uh, yeah, so they're, they're quite a good thing to look for and add to your collection. And here's the other thing that I'll show you. This is a uh, in, uh, synthetic material blanket from Costco. This was an update or replacement for the down blanket when they start, stopped carrying those. I just had the tag here a minute ago because I want to show you the tag for this. So this blanket is insulated with a material known as Primaloft. And Primaloft really is the premier synthetic insulated material as close to down as anything that has yet been manufactured. It's not quite the same as down, but it has some distinct advantages over over down and I'll tell you ounce per ounce gram for gram Primaloft is probably your best material next to down for insulated values. There may be some newer materials on the market, but I think even Primaloft Gold is, is an updated material, and it is just that good that it's been chosen by the military for insulative garments as well. So I really like Primaloft for a lot of reasons. Now, what are the advantages of uh, synthetic fills like this over, let's say, down? Number one is usually cost. It's usually less expensive. So if you look at two blankets of equal quality otherwise, and one is filled with down, even a high quality down, uh, and another one is filled with, say, Primaloft Gold, you're going to pay less for the Primaloft insulated blanket than you will the down blanket, so that when you're looking at value for dollar, that's something to think about. However, at the same time, Primaloft won't compress down as small as a down will, uh, so that is something to think about as well. If weight and bulk are an issue for you because you're an ultralight person, then maybe you want to stay with traditional down or some of the newer downs, which are hydrophobic again, resisting getting wet, but at the same time, Primaloft is very, very close, especially in its ability to compress. What it does better than down, though, is retain its insulated value once it's taken out of compression because it will regain its loft much quicker. Another distinct advantage of a synthetic like Primaloft over down is that it will, yes, it will get wet, 
but it will first resist getting wet longer than down. And even the, the synthetic or the um, treated downs now, the hydrophobic ones, more importantly though, it'll dry faster. Down is so hard to dry. You're certainly not going to do it on an overnight trip or a couple of day trip unless you have some really good conditions. With a Primloft blanket or a synthetic like this, you, if they do get wet, they usually retain more of their insulated value, certainly more than down, maybe not as much as wool, but they will retain some warmth even as they get wet. However, you still get them drenched. You're still going to get cold. So the nice thing about this is they're usually much easier to dry than any of the other materials that I, I'll be showing you. Easier to dry than wool, certainly easier to dry than down. Really, if you can get them squeezed down and get as much water out of them, maybe spin them over your head or put them in the wind, then you can drive out most of the water so that you're ready to go that next night in order to stay warm again. I think that's one of the reasons why these were so popular is because you get up in the morning, even if you got damp overnight, you could shake it out and uh, by that night it's ready to go again. So there's a lot of reasons for considering synthetics over down. Now, they still suffer, suffer some of the same downfalls that down blankets do, such as uh, they require some maintenance. You can, they still get stained, they still get smelly, they'll still need washing. They don't have the same issue with washing that down does. They don't have the same issue with storage that down has. But at the same time, they're still very delicate when you compare them against a wool blanket. They can be ripped easy. One of the nice things is if you do get a tear or a hole in your synthetic, you're not going to lose down flying out all over the place like you would with a down blanket, although you can repair them. Uh, I know, and even having things like tenacious tape to make patch repairs with, which is always a good idea if you have a synthetic or a down a blanket or sleeping bag. But yeah, so they may not be quite as warm as down. They may not compress quite as well as down, but they are very close, especially the modern materials like the Primaloff is to down. One last thing is, don't use them around a fire unless you don't mind getting holes that you either have to repair or maybe replace the blanket afterwards because they are subject to damage from heat and fires, of course. All right, let's move on to the next material. So the last blanket material I want to share with you is fleece polyester fleece, often referred to as polar fleece, which is actually a brand name for one type of fleece. I have two examples that I want to show you. First off is this brown fleece blanket, a very thin fleece at that though, that I picked up at the thrift store. And the other one is not truly a blanket. It is more of, well, it is a sleeping bag liner that has a full length zipper, but it, that does allow me to open it up and use it like a blanket. So fleece is actually a good choice for blanket materials for a few reasons. Number one, it's cheap, at least by comparison to some of the other products we talk about, certainly cheaper than down, most often cheaper than wool, and cheaper than the synthetics, or at least the higher end synthetics. Having said that though, there is a wide range of qualities when it comes to fleece blankets and a wide range of prices to go with it. So if you are going to consider purchasing a fleece blanket, I would encourage you to take the time to look at the different fleeces to see what you feel is the best match for you. So what what are the other uh, distinct advantages of fleece? Well, one thing is that it's very quick to dry. First off, it resists getting wet. It's very good at wicking moisture away from your body and it's very easy to squeeze out most of the moisture, maybe spin it again, spin it around your head. And when it's at least mostly dry, it will retain most of its heat and insulative value, unlike down, of course, closer to something wool will do, but it's much, much easier to dry. Now, are there any downsides to fleece? Uh, yeah, they're very quick to be damaged, especially around a fire. So you do have to be careful with them in terms of their durability. And I guess the other thing is that they can take on smells. They can take on body odors if you're having them close to your body. But the best part about that, of course, is they're very easy to wash as well, unlike wool, unlike down, and even unlike the other synthetics. So I would encourage you to take a look at fleece blankets as an option. One of the things that I've considered doing is matching up a fleece blanket with a smaller wool blanket and then putting them together so I have the best of both worlds. A nice, soft fleece with all of its qualities, such as wicking and drying, and have that on the inside with the protection qualities and durability qualities of a wool blanket on the outside. Just a thought, uh, if I ever do that, I'll bring it to you to show you. 
All right, when I opened this video up, I said a couple of things that I wanted to accomplish. Number one is that this would be the start of a discussion around using blankets and the types of materials for those blankets for people who go out into the woods. So it, I would invite you to contribute to this discussion with your thoughts and considerations around blankets, whether or not they're a good item to take with you, and what type of material is best for certain uses. This is, wasn't meant to be a fully comprehensive video on all the factors that go into blankets or all the blanket types out there. So once again, if you have another type of material blanket that you think should be included in the discussion, put that also in the comment section below. Something I've recently become aware of, they are not yet on the market as far as I can find out about, although there is at least one in Kickstarter, and that is a blanket made out of basically graphite. The material is known as graphene. It's turned into an apparel type of material. It is used in a number of different products but this is the first time I've heard of it being used in a blanket and it has some distinct advantages or at least claims about not only its durability but its ability to regulate body heat both in the hot and in the cold. Uh, I'm looking forward to maybe getting one at some point to try out because if the claims or if it lives up to its claims it should be almost revolutionary in its ability and its value for taking out in the woods. So if you know any Anything about graphene uh, blankets then put, sure put that in the comment section below as well all right that's all I have for you today if you have any comments put them in the comments section or any recommendations for future videos along these lines put that in the comment section below but until next time get out and explore and take that path less travel because it will make all the difference bye for now